Alright, welcome back to part 5 of Nintendo's second quest. We will be starting back where we left off at Pippi's house. We did a little bit of menu dancing at the end of the last part for the memes. But uh, we're going now. We are making our way through the swamp. So from this point on, I'm menu walking for absolute safety. I mean, I have been um, before for safety. But at this point, the encounters are so deadly. Any encounter will pretty much one-shot Anna. Three mooks, two mooks, any of the bisons, all of it's really tough. Um, you can get into like Starman fight and Barbots, and those guys aren't the worst. I think we see a couple of those guys. But uh, not in the swamp. I think I did the swamp super safe because I hate the swamp. The swamp would actually be a good spot for me to teleport because it's very hard to teleport away. But knowing me, I tend to just teleport away when I obviously when I'm not trying to. It's the worst. So I'm playing it safe in menu walking. But uh, yeah, I really don't want Anna to die. But our objective here is to get to LA slash Valentine to um, get Teddy. Uh, Lloyd obviously is not very helpful and there's no reason for uh, us to still have Lloyd anymore. Once we can get Teddy, he is very, very strong. But we have to get there first, and that means we have to go through the swamp. Um, the path I'm taking is like pretty much the fastest way out of the swamp. But uh, it's very, very easy to get lost here. Um, there's a lot of dead ends. And uh, everything looks the same. I mean, in this game in general, a lot of things look the same. But the swamp is horrible. All the bridges look like each other and it's very easy to get lost and lose your bearings and be walking for a long time just to end up at a dead end. So that's obviously not what we want. So we are gonna do the dash out of here. The very slow dash. But the safe dash. Um, yeah, uh, I feel like, nah, I was gonna say I feel like I, I could take some of these enemies, but really, like, there's no, from what I'm at right now, Nintendo isn't really able to kill much. I don't believe Anna knows PK Freeze Gamma, which is, like, her first, like, real good spell, offensive spell. I mean, PK Freeze Beta and PK Beam Beta is is a are both decent spells in their own right, but they don't they do like 60 damage, 60 to 80 damage. Which I mean, I guess saying that it's it sounds pretty good, but against these enemies, they're so brutal. If Anna, for Anna to be using a spell, she can't be guarding, and Anna would get one shot by any attack if she's not guarding so using magic with her can be risky if, if she's in death range and 51 HP these enemies will be doing 60 damage to her like it's nothing so we, we definitely need her guarding if I do get into a fight but so yeah the idea here is to get to get to a lay and recruit Teddy so that uh, we can have Teddy's damage. Teddy, Teddy by himself, he comes pretty strong. He uh, he joins the party at level 18. Anna and Lloyd both join the party at level one. So that in itself is pretty insane. But um, he also joins with 130 HP, which is enough to tank. Like he he's he joins the party with enough health to be able to survive the final boss fight and uh in my gba all party member speedrun that's what i do i recruit teddy 
and I level up Anna to have PSI shield, and I leave Nintendo at like level 9, and uh, I just kill the final boss with Teddy because he's just so strong at, on his own. He He's so beefy. But uh, that being said, strong on his own is not entirely true. He, with the katana, the best weapon in the game, Teddy becomes an absolute powerhouse, and then he's really, really strong. Teddy using his bare hands is is pretty weak sauce, like Nen 10 currently. But uh, once we can get our hands on that katana, we will be absolutely gaming. But we're almost at LA. We gotta go up left a little bit after these trees. We're almost there. We've made it to the path, the path to LA. And yes, we will finally be able to get rid of Lloyd's corpse. So I remember when I recorded this, there was a, a misplay. Like to to truly beat the game without uh, anyone else in your party member or in your party, just as Nenten. What you want to do is go all the way to Mount Itoi with the party that I have now, and then dance with Anna. Uh, and doing that will um, like kind of just like block out the the cutscene where you lose Teddy. Um, but I didn't do that. I got Teddy as soon as I possibly could, which is kind of what's intended, like the intended route. Um, but due to some glitches and some trickery, I'm still able to, uh, I'll show much later in this playthrough, me beating the game with only Nintendo. But uh, I do remember thinking that I kind of messed it up. If I didn't do the speedrun route already, uh, my save would be kind of messed up here. But that's no big deal, and I'll talk about it more when we get to that point. For now, we'll focus on getting Teddy. So. I have to revive Lloyd here. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can dance in the live house to get rid of Teddy in the first place. Or I mean to get rid of Lloyd in the first place to recruit Teddy. Um, obviously since Lloyd died, I will not be using him for combat anymore. So I don't think he grows past level 2. Uh, if he does, it's just involuntary. But I think I tried to keep him at level 2 as long as I could. But Lloyd is out of commission. He is no longer able to kill anything. And uh, that won't be that relevant because we're about to get rid of him. And get the much better Teddy. So here, I don't know why, but I bought the survival knife, which is this item for $1,200. I don't know why I did this. I think I thought that the, that was the ticket. But then, after thinking about it for like 5 seconds, I still buy it, and then I immediately bought the show ticket. The show ticket only costs $350, it's the first option. And I think almost immediately after I bought it, I realized that I did not buy the show ticket and I needed to buy it. So the last inventory item is the ticket to the show. And uh, I have the survival knife for literally no reason. Because once you recruit Teddy, you can pretty much get... Um, you can pretty much get the katana as soon as possible, which is what I'll be doing. And the katana gives him plus 58 attack. The uh, the survival knife I bought only gives him plus 38, and I I don't understand why I bought it. Me hovering it and then not dropping it. But now we're gonna dance. I love I love this dancing scene and I love this song so much. All that I needed was you. If uh, there was one point when I was routing Mother One GBA any percent, where it was almost faster to to do what I described the all party members route to recruit Teddy and then beat Gygus with Teddy and Anna instead of Ninten and instead of going to Eve. But uh, 
even at the time I routed it, it was a little bit faster to go to Eve. And the main reason it was faster is because this scene takes too long. And I also, in the route, I have to use, I have to use the train to get Anna's hat. And then I do the breadcrumb glitch to breadcrumb to Anna. And then I breadcrumb to Teddy after I, after I get Anna. So it, it's still really fast, but it's just, it was a couple minutes slower than the Eve route. And then me and a couple other runners found uh, even more improvements that made this route obsolete. But I routed this a long time ago, or I routed all party members a long time ago. And I finally did my first run of it like two months ago, and it's super fun. Or I finally finished my first run of it. It's a super, super fun speedrun. It, it, it requires getting Anna to level four so that she can learn PSI shield and then giving her all of the speed capsules so that she can outspeed Gygus and give Teddy a shield. But uh, if you care about that, then you should watch that speedrun. But if you care about this, then you should watch this. Teddy is holding a knife in his sprite and Nintendo of America deemed that to be too frowned upon for like a party member sprite holding a knife, so they nerfed his sprite and removed the knife uh, in the English versions when they translated this. But I never really understood that because he still equips knives and he still equips swords. So it's like, why does it matter if his sprite is holding a tiny little knife? I never understood that. Some of the other localization changes is more understandable, but this one, like, I don't know. It's just a knife. And <laughs> I literally have a knife in my inventory. It's like, what the heck? But now we'll be going to the caves, and I will be menu walking. Uh, the reason I'm menu walking is still to keep Anna safe. Uh, the enemies here are just as dangerous as the swamp. In fact, probably more dangerous. But uh, also, even though we have Teddy, he doesn't do much damage. And uh, if I can't reliably kill things, then I shouldn't reliably try to fight things. So that's why I'm trying to avoid as many encounters. And what I do get into, I will run away from. But we are gaming. We are not far from the Medicine Man house. Medicine Man's house. And uh, this guy's just a legend. He gives you infinite medicines, and he also will heal you. He'll let you sleep at his house for free. But uh, this encounter zone is definitely a tough one, so that's why we're menu walking. Um, something about this game I, I hear about a lot is... Uh, People like to go to the mouthwash guy, the guy who like fills your inventory with mouthwash when you talk to him. And then uh, the people like to say that selling the mouthwashes is like an effective way to make money and that like after he fills your inventory you can buy mouthwash for like way cheaper than what you can sell them at the store for. So people like to say that you can like cheese the game and have infinite money by running mouthwashes to the store and selling them but I never understood that cuz this medicine man right here well not right here but coming up like he gives you life up cream slash medicines for free and they sell for more than what mouthwashes sell for so it's just more effective if you wanted to make infinite money to just sell medicines that you get for free from this guy but I never hear people talking about that I hear people talking about selling the mouthwashes But realistically, in this game, I never really had an issue with money. Aside, like, in the early game, money is tight, obviously. But once you're at this stage in the game, once you have Teddy, like, Teddy will be killing everything. And the enemies drop a lot of money. Probably because they're so difficult. So I never really had a money issue playing this game casually. We are almost there, past this bridge will be the house. So I think I don't go into the medicine man's house. Uh, I'm trying to get to the caves, and uh, this area of the game is 
a little bit different than the, it was changed in the English version, uh, like similar to the Magic Ant Caves. It just has a completely different layout. It looks really similar to the English version, but the English version simplified the path to the Mount Toy Caves. Uh, apparently it was like too confusing or something. And um, you'll see why. Like, I'm gonna get lost here for a while because I cannot find the caves for the life of me. And I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't, I didn't know why I wasn't going to the cave. I thought I was taking the right path. But, uh... Yeah, you'll realize I, I realized that that's a dead end, and I realized oh, this is totally different than what I'm used to. I kind of like that when you have like perfect menuing rhythm, it it kind of lines up with the song being friends. But when you get into an encounter, it ruins all of that. So these guys are a very dangerous fight for sure. I do not want to be fighting these guys. That's why I'm immediately going for Dimension Warp. Uh, and you'll see Teddy only did 28 damage on that first guy. These guys probably have like, I don't know how much health they have, but it's probably around like 80 to 100, I'd assume. And Teddy doing 28 is not going to cut it. I would not be able to kill those guys safely it would be much more likely I die than trying to fight these guys. So that's why I really need that katana. The katana is in the very first room of Etoy Caves. And uh, it's generally what I like to do is get Teddy and then immediately get the katana. So that's what I'm doing here. But um, I need to be going up left from where I am right now but I did not realize that, and I kept going right. And then, um, I, like, I, I feel like this is the way, and then I realized that this is actually not, not correct at all. But I'm actually really close to where the caves are. I need to be going down and left a little bit, and then up, uh, to be able to get to where the caves are. But where I am right now is a little bit incorrect. The area to my up left is the path to the caves. But uh, I, I honestly don't mind. I, when I was playing this, I didn't mind getting lost like this. It was it was really refreshing because uh, I've played this game so much that I like generally know where everything is and know everything about it. So that uh. When I got lost here, it was really fun. I I did not expect this area to be as different as it was. I think I kind of knew it was different, but I didn't expect it to be this different and this confusing. I should probably mention, I think this is the, aside from the like speed runs that I've done, this was my first like real casual playthrough of the Japanese Famicom version. And uh, the speed runs I've done of the Famicom version did not go to this area of the game at all. There, they were glitch speedruns that beat the game uh, without having to do this stuff. Those would be that would be Famicom Any Percent and Famicom All All Melodies. I think I had done runs of both categories before this playthrough. Uh, maybe not All Melodies. I definitely had done Any Percent, but I think I did All Melodies after the Switch version came out and. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe I was doing all melodies at this time. I'm not sure. But we got away from those mooks. Teddy got the run away. I tried to dimension warp with Ninten, but Teddy's faster and he actually hit his run chance, so I was able to save some PP there. But yeah, I am just looking for that uh for that cave. I think I've at this point I've backtracked all the way back to basically where the medicine man is. So I think I uh, go ahead and take that heal because I've tried to dimension warp a couple times. I think. <laughs> I'm definitely just lost. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep, I walked into the other dead end. This was like the first dead end I walked to when I got to this area. And now I'm very loosely menuing, because I'm like, what the heck? But yeah, this open area is where the um, medicine man is. I don't know if I... S no, I don't think I did. So uh, a, a big change, a immediate apparent difference uh, is that this guy's house, his location is way different compared to the English versions and the GBA versions. Um, so this, what I'm hovering over right now is medicine one, slash life of cream, one of the best items in the game. And especially since I'm not using bread, it's like probably the best item that I'll be using. And it literally just full heals you, but it is amazing for killing the final boss. But if you'll notice, this house has a ton of space below it. In the GBA slash NES versions, um, the tree line is way closer to the house. And uh, in this version, it's like kind of in the open, which is really interesting. And that's like the first way you'll be able to tell that this is a, a much different map than it normally is. But it's okay, I think after I healed here, I, I figured out what I was doing. I got my head in the game. Somewhat, anyways. But we are going, um... Again, my main objective that I'm trying to do right now is get the katana for Teddy so that I can actually have some... some damage output. Because right now, Anna's spells aren't cutting it, and she has no health, so she's at a huge risk if she's using her spells. And uh, Nintendo is, even at level 19, at this point, he's basically, he's basically on par with Teddy. Teddy, Teddy's gonna have more straight up damage once I get the katana. The only uh, assets that Nintendo has is like Dimension Warp and a couple other spells like Quick Up and Offense Up and Defense Up. Those are all really good spells in this game. But uh, aside from that, when it comes to like damage, Nintendo is severely lacking that's part partially the reason why I was um, you'll see I'm getting lost in the same spot again but this time I walked up really far and I realized I realized that that's the path to the cave and I was like okay I know I'm close but um yeah so part of the reason why I didn't mind starting the playthrough at level 18 is because like at this point of the game, it's like part five, and Nintendo is already like most inferior party member, other than Lloyd, obviously. Both Anna and Teddy are more useful than Nintendo generally, except for when it comes to running away. But even still, um, Teddy's faster, so he's better at running when he's just straight up running. Nintendo is only good for dimension warping, for safety. It's like the only spell I use with him. <laughs> See, like, Teddy missed the run here, and then Anna got smashed for 30. So if if Anna wasn't guarding there, Anna would have just straight up died. And we don't want that, so thank god I could guard with her. But, uh, and thank god I had Dimension Warp to get away from that fight. Because I probably would have lost Anna on turn 2. If, like, if I attempted to run there with Nintendo and failed, Anna was probably gone. So, it was a good thing. Good thing I have Dimension Warp. I think Dimension Warp in general is like one of my favorite spells in any RPG, let alone the, the Mother series. It's just such a phenomenal, even for 16 PSI, it's just so good. It's just an automatic run. The most frustrating thing ever is when I'm playing Earthbound and I can't escape from some garbage for like like literally 10 turns sometimes it takes so long to get away from enemies in earthbound and it's so annoying but uh we don't have that issue in mother one it's just <laughs> i was about to say it's a better game but that's kind of a controversial take I, I i wouldn't go that far i prefer mother one to earthbound but i wouldn't necessarily say it's a better game i think i would get a lot of hate if i made that claim Earthbound is certainly more polished. 
<laughs> when it comes to the GBA ports though. Mother 1 is Mother 1 GBA is leagues better than Mother 2 GBA. No one will dispute me on that. Mother 2 GBA is a train wreck. And I'm allowed to say that cuz I'm still the only person who's done a Mother 2 GBA speedrun. <laughs> it's so bad. But uh, Mother 1 GBA, phenomenal game. And uh, Mother 1 Famicom, also a phenomenal game. Especially if I could read Japanese. It, I would have so much enjoyment playing this version if I could read everyone's text too. But that's okay, we're not here to read text. And plus this text is going to be in English, Katana written in English. Very smart. I forget why it is exactly, <laughs> I almost dropped it. Uh, someone explained to me one time why it's actually written in English, but uh, yep, now we have Teddy equipped the katana, giving him plus 58 offense, the best weapon in the game for sure. And I'm Onyx hooking out of here. So now that Teddy actually has DPS, I'm going to be able to... Uh, to safely kill enemies and get Anna some real levels. Like, I could chill in Magic Hand and grind Anna for like a really long time, and that would be safe, but it would take so long. And Nintendo and, and Teddy would steal a lot of her experience. So it's really not the most viable option. But you'll see, I don't even need to guard with Anna when Teddy's outspeeding everything and one shotting everything. It's so great. Um,. So, yeah, we have obtained Teddy, and we have obtained the best weapon in the game for Teddy, and in general, all in one part, from the part that we started at Pippi's house. So, really, we got a lot done to, uh, in this episode. Uh, so there's not much more, I don't think. I think we're going to walk out of Magicant. Uh, actually, I don't even know if we'll get that far. I think I'm just killing things in Magic Ant. Uh, and I think that all I do the rest of this part is go around and try to see where would be some good areas to safely grind Anna without having her die. Uh, I went the wrong way in this cave, and I think I get this present, but I'm not 100% sure what it even is. <laughs> I was about to go for it, and then I got into another fight. But it's a Groucho. We love Grouchos for sure. Um. Oh, nice. Anna got a level. Very nice. And learned some PSI, but she didn't uh, gain any max PP. So, I, I don't know why I tried to read it. It's not like I know Japanese, but <laughs> it looks like it's going to be the first item in Anna's inventory. I think I gave Anna that and the survival knife, because at the time, I don't think I knew it was the survival knife. I don't know what I thought it was. But uh, Anna's got the two random items in her inventory. And yeah, I'm Onyx looking because I think I'm going to teleport to Marysville, maybe. Uh, I want to figure out what that item was. Yep, here we are in Marysville. Um, sorry, I'm looking up what that item was. It might have been the sword. I think it might have been the Magic Hand sword. So, <laughs> I think Anna's currently dripped out with the survival knife and the basic sword right now. Um, I'll definitely be able to tell once I get into the inventory. But, uh, yeah, we're just...
killing these guys for experience. Let's see, Anna is gonna get... She went from 1157 to 1179, so that's about 22 experience. That's kind of weak. I think we can do better than 22. But uh, we're going. Looks like we're making our way to a sweet little factory. Oh, never mind. As soon as I said something, I U-turned. And then I U-turned again. I think I'm just killing enemies here. Because these guys are so safe. These, there's no way these guys will be killing Anna. And yeah. I'm fairly certain that was the... Uh, basic sword. I don't know what else it would have been. But I do not know the item locations in the Famicom version of each of uh, Magicant Caves. I'm not proficient at. Because I feel like, nah. It 100% it was not the PSI stone. Looks like now I'm going to teleport to Snowman. Wow, I really got far on that one. Teleport one tile and then bonk. But I was about to say this looks like a better lineup, but I got trolled so hard by those bushes. This just shows how bad I am at teleporting. Whenever I want to teleport away, I can't. And whenever I'm trying to miss encounters and crash, I, I teleport away. But uh, here we are in Snowman with that good music. And, uh, I think there's not much else for this part. Looks like I'm gonna fight this guy, the lone wolf. Let's see how much, uh, XP he gives Anna. Anna's at 1191. Wow, that guy did 40 to Nintendo. And Anna did nothing. I think Nintendo also smacked him for nothing. But Teddy's doing the damage. Anna got only 30-something, which is really not much better than outside of outside of uh, Thanksgiving. But I think that will be all for this point, for this part. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.